All right. In class today, we concluded with the Supreme Court case that overturns Plessy versus Ferguson and will now um, move to integrate the school system. And this just shows you a political cartoon um, of people who are happy and referencing people who are happy um, about the decision in Brown v. Board. And you can kind of see um, the chisel and hammer breaking the bonds. Uh, that are tying African Americans down to black schools. This would be like a pro argument. But at the same time, there is also pro segregationists who are very upset about the decision um, with Brown v. Board. And we're going to see a series of um, events that kind of depict the opposition towards the integration of schools across the country. So first, in response to school segregation, I'm sorry, in response to school integration, um, the white citizens councils will form throughout the South. Um, the first white citizens council was formed in Mississippi, um, 1954, just right after Brown was um, officially ruled on. White supremacists um, basically formed uh, groups that opposed school integration. And white citizens councils also targeted and sabotaged voter registration drives um, broadly beyond just integration in schools, but that is where it started and that was its main focal point in the beginning. Um, council members viewed themselves as like a cut above the KKK. Um, they kind of get this nickname known as the Uptown Clan because they like to think that they were not quite as um, heinous and um, degrading in their efforts, but in reality, they use tactics just as radical as the Klan, including violence. Um, many members of the white citizens' councils were very, like, affluent people and, and established people in communities, such as businessmen, police officers, religious leaders. Um, so this is a pretty powerful group. And you see um, councils exist uh, throughout the... Um, the South. Just for an example, um, there was a white citizens council formed in Louisiana that um, promoted a law that would like prohibit things like interracial dancing and interracial um, social functions and athletic training and just other types of kind of engagements. So, you know, it, it goes beyond just within schools, um, but that was kind of its focal point. This just kind of showing you another political cartoon of um, pro segregationists, like anti integration, anti, you know, Brown v. Board, um, showing that they feel the Supreme Court's ruling has doomed the South. Another kind of example in terms of um, opposition to the Brown versus Board decision in 1956, just a couple of years after um, the decision. Uh, Henry Byrd from Virginia calls for master, massive resistance, which would be a group of laws intended to prevent school integration in the South. And you see this quote here on the screen, if we can organize the southern states for massive resistance to this order, I think that in time the rest of the country will realize that racial integration is not going to be accepted in the South. And this just shows you that um, the southern states are willing to go above and beyond um, to prevent the integration of schools from actually happening. Um, the one aspect of massive resistance in Virginia was they called to cut off, you know, funding for any public school that was trying to integrate. Um, that's just absolutely, you know, um, crazy. Uh, like that people would think that not educating, you know, um, the youth would be better than educating them in an integrated um, classroom, this sign just kind of shows you, like, as part of the massive resistance movement, one county's school system completely shuts down um, during the period of integration, and when the schools eventually did reopen, they made attendance voluntary. Just really not uh, the best, um, I think, look and aspect of society in terms of promoting, you know, education and growth. They feel like that's, you know, 
productive, but it's pretty backwards. Um, this just shows you another example in Prince Edward County, Virginia, where they closed all public schools for um, nearly five years. And you see this one young woman sign, I have lost four years of education, why five? Um, so, you know, uh, oh, actually connecting to uh, the Cold War, you see under that sign, she quotes, let's tell Russia about this, kind of highlighting that they're not educating their um, students in certain counties, which is not really good for the Cold War effort overall. Perhaps the most well-known example of opposition to integration of schools is that of the Little Rock Nine, um, which takes place in Little Rock, Arkansas. So in the school district where Little Rock is, they decided that the best way to handle integration was to integrate students gradually. Um, so they basically um, decide that in this fall of 1957, they're going to um, enroll nine black students who were individually chosen based on merit, by the way. But they're going to enroll nine black students to attend Central High School. And on the first day of classes, the governor of Arkansas, even though his district has made this ruling, the governor of Arkansas, Faber, is going to use the um, National Guard of Arkansas to block the black students from entering the high school. And you can just imagine that it was completely brave of these students to agree to go in the first place because there was an angry mob of students and parents alike waiting for them that morning, trying to protest their attendance at the school. And then the governor orders that the National Guard block you from entering with armed guards. That's very intimidating. This act, of course, of the governor is very, um, you know, misbehaving and unconstitutional because the Supreme Court has ruled this must happen. So eventually, President Eisenhower is going to intervene and he will have um, the federal troops and he'll kind of take, I think, control also of the uh, Arkansas National Guard. He'll have the troops, as, you know, escort the students and protect the students in the, in the school. Um, so under the protection of the U.S. Army, these students did attend school. And you can kind of see some pretty famous signs from the events that took place in the Little Rock Nine. Um, and that's just one example. Um, we also, you know, obviously see um, cases at the local level. Most of you all know the story of Ruby Bridges, um, who was a young, young elementary school student who was the first black student to integrate um, an elementary school in New Orleans. And she also was met with a lot of opposition and oppression to where she needed some protection. Um, and many of y'all maybe have learned that story in middle school. Okay, we are going to um, pick up with some pretty um, prominent civil rights organizations um, involving students, involving Christian ministers, and some of their um, non-violent, non-confrontational forms of protest. We're going to go over those tomorrow. So if you just want to save your notes for now, we'll pick up with this on Monday. Oh, I said tomorrow, didn't I? I meant Monday. Y'all have a good weekend.